Yeah, th thank you very much. Um, I'll try and keep this relatively brief, but this is probably getting into the uh, the focus bit around what we can start to do together. And it's great to see so many faces that um, I've been involved with, have the pleasure of being involved with, um, either directly or through the High Street Tassels programme. And it's really exciting to carry on in this journey. So. Um, essentially, we are here to be as much help as possible through what through the uh, curtilages of this project to really help you uh, um, unpack some of the issues you've got and really build uh, robust sustainability into your plans to tackle change. So that's really all our mandate is. Um, but what we have been doing is having to think around um, how can we support you across some of those journeys. And we saw um, the slide a couple of times um, put up Johnny and then I think uh, Kathy had a go successfully at this. The timeline, our, our, our third time lucky with it, um, and how we've repurposed and rethought some of the task force pro products to be able to support you. And one of the learnings from the task force, and please, um, as we make contact early in the new year to start things to really roll, if there's any way we need to think about how we can really make sure we're as flexible and as targeted and as focused on what you need, that's what we're here for, because we really want to be with you to make this a success. So it, it does come across uh, effectively um, uh, a number of key themes, um, which we saw before Johnny presented. So we will be looking, working with you on the field work side, on the visioning side, where you need us, uh, as little or as much as that uh, within the, um, the framework of the project. Um, supporting you and your plans in terms of some of the uh, thinking around delivery, what will make those robust. Um, and, uh, and some actual support um, on maybe some practical, tactical things from other areas around the country and other people have done things that can just help move things forward. Um, and we will probably start to move away from our support as we envisage it at the moment, um, sort of in, into the end of so summer, early, early autumn. And I'll just give a very quick whistle stop tour on what some of the things will be. And if you've been involved with the High Street Task Force uh, project, then you might recognise some of these in terms of some of the essence of them flowing through. So we, we will have some form of transforming your High Street report, and that is a bit of desk work, looking at the data. We've heard the importance of the data before. Um, what, particularly as well, not just in terms of some of the, the overarching factors of footfall and maybe spend and sentiment data and activation levels, but actually, particularly if you're, air, if you're looking in a very particular area of focus, we might also want to look at some of the data behind that, just to give us a, a feel for what the evidence is telling us um, around, the, um, around the issues you're facing. Uh, and obviously, cross refer that with the information you've got and the thinking you have just to get a bit of a, a, a background feeling for some of the issues and where some of the opportunities are in terms of um, what we could possibly support you with and what might be helpful um, you know and we'll work with that and finesse that with you um, in terms of thinking about action planning because this is very much not not just giving a set of recommendations but actually a set of thinking and considerations for doing and actually getting on and starting to support you in the delivery so that the word accelerator very much is what it's supposed to be and what it does. So that's the very initial part, part as you saw in the graphic before, that's when I kick that off, um, that process at the beginning of um, January. Um, one of the things that's been really useful is to get into the place and actually see the place live and, and up front. And obviously we know a number of you of, of yourselves through all the work in other areas, so we'll use that where we have got that to build on that. Um, and to do some work with you um, to really start to get under the skin of what that issue is as you perceive it, as your stakeholders perceive it, as, as others perceive it, and start to think around well, what are some of the solutions on that. Um, and, and, and also have a look at not just the issues, but what you've got in terms of capacity and resource and resilience within the area, um, what are your partnerships like, who else, who else is involved, and start to get a real picture around where you've got strengths or maybe some gaps and how we can support you on the development of, of that. So that kind of is the first bit um, that hopefully we can really get moving on pretty quickly that starts to frame where can some of the support go and what are some of the things that you'll probably be working on as you start to pull together your partnership work and thinking around the visioning and some of the actions that you need to do to tackle whatever it is you particularly um, uh, want to focus on. And obviously we heard about um, a number of those this morning. Um, one of the, I think the slides have gone a little bit, um, they've gone a bit um, strange, so I'm not quite sure what's um, gone on here. But anyway, we might, um, we might come back to that in, in a minute. But um, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll mention this now. Um, one of the things we will be wanting to work with you on is partnership development. And we'll just talk about the process of that. Um, and this was an example that we heard from before, right, Ashton and Makerfield, similar to 
list card where um, there's been some really good work to get that engine going. So I'll talk about some of the bits in a minute around how we might be able to help you with that. Um, but they are now really on with the next step of getting this, they call it an innovation board going. And similarly to Listcard, they realized that they haven't got the capacity internally or even the bandwidth within some of the existing partners to be quite focused on some of the almost secretariat stuff, some of the outreach stuff. So they're actually commissioning somebody to be with them on a two year journey to help with that process. Not hugely expensive, I understand, but um, it's gonna give them some extra resource to be able to do that. And you might wanna think around that where you've got some gaps to sort of do some of the doing of actually the partnership um, legwork. Um, visioning's been really interesting to keep hearing the themes around that, the absolute bedrock for thinking around uh, where you want your place to be. Um, and we've learned some lessons from the high street task force before. So we have run a developing a shared vision workshop, but what we're proposing in this instance with you, um, you will have visions potentially, you might not. Um, you will have um, certain, uh, uh, be on a certain journey with that vision potentially. So rather than us coming in be rather prescriptive, what we want to do is offer absolutely bespoke support um, from our excellent um, place professionals at the Design Council to actually be with you, to understand where you are in, that, in your journey um, and what your stakeholders and your partners feel about it uh, and to really just unpack that. And then with you is to co-design something if there's any areas that you think you might wanna work forward on, build out or test or change, um, wherever it is, um, there'll be support um, for that potentially to three days. You might not need three days, so it might be less, but if you do, great. Um, if a few places don't need a great deal of support, we might even be able to be more flexible and tip that into some slightly more support on that. So you come out with something that's you feel very robust, that your partners really feel uh, enshrines what you want to do going forwards. And you know, sometimes we go into a lot of places and there's a lot of good stuff actually happening and just having somebody coming in outside to give the validity and the confidence that you know what, you are on the right track is, is quite a powerful thing. So that might be all we end up doing in that instance. Um, Joe, you just want to mention a little bit here about um, about Horncastle and some of the stuff that came from the developing a shared vision. Yeah, so I just wanted to sort of chip in here really. So I've spoken to a few of you today. Today's been a really interesting and engaged session. So my name is Joe, so I kind of help the experts that go into all the different um, places that we support through the task force. But I also wear another hat, which is as co-founder of the Teenage Market, which is as an initiative that's been going for over 10 years. It's all about engaging and supporting young people through market events, giving them a free platform in the heart of your town centre to try and identify that next generation of you know, market uh, traders, but also young performers as well, and creating a whole event around it. Now, what was interesting about Horncastle is they engaged with the Development and Share Vision programme, which I think we heard from Steve before, from Heinberg. I know a number of you have also engaged in that process. But what they talked about here was they wanted to become, in terms of what their kind of vision was, the UK's leading market town, and they wanted to diversify their market offer and find a way to sort of engage with different audiences. So we partnered with them on the delivery of what is now, I think, their fifth or sixth teenage market event. And in terms of the legacy of that, not only has it obviously animated their town centre, brought young people into the mix, brought new footfall and families and the like in, but actually they were able to identify a young trader who's now moved into a vacant unit on the high street. So, you know, it's not just a case of, you know, giving free market stalls away. There is a legacy there, much to the, the kind of work that Bex is doing through platform places, a teenage market acts in a very similar way, providing the opportunity for young people to get involved. As high street task force locations, you all have access to our brand and use of that and the resources that we built for free. So do come and speak with me about that if you're interested, particularly about how the investment through the accelerators might be able to help program some of that activity. Um, but what we have also found, so we had a great, fantastic event the weekend in Carlisle. That was out of a shopping centre, the Lane Shopping Centre. We've done great work in Liscard, again, out of a shopping centre um, and across the whole of Lincolnshire through the teenage market. But what it comes down to is the resource that you put behind it. If you resource it, both from a local authority perspective and the community, there's such an amount of value that you can get out of it. In those places that haven't put the same time, energy and resource behind it, they've maybe done one event and it's kind of fallen away. So where possible, we really do say, 
Try and think of it as strategically as possible, but it's just one example of how your vision can be operationalized. So it's not just a case of going, you know, this is what to achieve in five, 10 years time. This vision was achieved within probably three to six months of us having that initial engagement. So it's very much a roadmap that we could potentially work with you on in, in the different locations. So, yeah, thank, thank you, Joe. And it's been interesting to speak to places that have had that. It's the bit I quite like, and it tips back into empty property again is where they've moved on to um, wanting to then take their market into something slightly more permanent and just as we heard from Bexor, just test it in a, in, in a physical location inside a building. So that's, that's uh, really encouraging. Um, expert support afterwards. So uh, one of the things you want to do is once you uh, support you with an offer to you, once we've done the sort of diagnostic with you and looked at what, where that roadmap might be of support, um, you will be busy working away on your plans and your partnerships and the development of that. So we're very happy to offer you the opportunity to come in, just do a little bit of critical friend review with you. Um, as we always say, we are not, and I think Cathy said this earlier, we are not the experts in your place, you are, but if we can bring in some bit of that insight and support and help, um, just to see if there's any way of really making your plans um, as optimal as possible, absolutely um, do look at that with us, and whether that be on your, on your governance side with your partnerships, or indeed actually on the, um, the things you want to do in terms of some of the actual specific uh, wicked issues that you need to try and, un need to try and unblock. Um, and clearly specialist expert support. So um, if you really do need some, uh, some, some additional ideas or thinking or, or, or even challenge or, or encouragement for, for, you know, for some parts of your partnership around particular things, then we've got access to a wide, um, wide body of, of, of experts, you know, some of them in, in the room you know, today, who've, who are doing this sort of stuff on quite a regular basis and, and, and are living it, and they can bring in some of their experience just to sort of you know, almost shortcut some of the things that you might be wrestling with, whether that is some of those examples there. Um, and even maybe saying, well, after this, maybe you want to look at these people or go and talk to them, or here's some other case studies or examples. So that's... That's kind of the expert support process again, sort of roughly between around sort of three days with the support there. I know it's not huge, but actually it can be quite valuable in terms of what you, um, you know, what you get from that and how you might want to use that. And we'll work very flexibly with you on what that looks like and how you draw that down through the early part of the program. Um, obviously, we heard before. I'm not going to go into this any length unless the slides have corrupted again, which <laughs> we'll see when I push the next button. Um, you know, high street rental auctions that Lucy mentioned before. Um, I use this as an example because it's a two-way thing. It's, it, it's going to be a, hopefully it's a, you know, a new thing that could be out there. It could be a really valuable tool potentially, um, but it'll need trialing and experimenting and having a go with and um, you know, where we can, if, if we can provide any support in that process as we learn as part of the pilot process, you know, we'd really like to work with you on that as an example, as we would with any other bits as well. Um, so this is where, I'm not going to go into this, so we deleted these earlier, but the um, Come back. To come back to them, but maybe we'll revisit that in a, in a, in a few months' time. Uh, and best practice, guys, on the things that we've been talking around, um, lots of places have found that quite useful, just learning from, um, from some of the tools and techniques, both from the research but from practitioners as well, what other people have done, and being able to offer that out there, um, both as a repository and also a bit of an encouragement that some of these things that may be a bit tricky there are ways of starting to tackle them and deal with them, as, as you will know. And you know, through our learning, the task force, we're learning from you about some of the things you're doing and reflecting that back to other places. But clearly, one of the things that's really important about this is it's a pilot. So we want to understand what effect it actually has in the area that we're looking at and, and wanting to work for actually improving place. So really important just to do a little bit of work in understanding both two things, really. Um, that how the pilot works and the process of that and the structure and how, what it seeks to achieve operationally and how it, how it runs and actually what it is also achieved. What are the outcomes, which is ultimately the whole focus of this? And is there some learning that we can get from that? So we we'll want to do a little bit of work with you to measure uh, some baseline factors to get a real understanding of some of the things. And you can see that in, in blue there, um, sort of for example, shops and litter. And, and set ourselves some thinking but on your particular area. So we heard about the greening nature, nature before. We heard um, around ASB. Are there indicators and things that we can actually say, well, this is where we are now. Let's see where we go with a real push in some of these factors and then start to measure, track them and measure them further down the line. Um, and that becomes quite an important process of proving the case and learning where maybe things don't quite work and what we can do um, going forward. So not that you're guinea pigs, 
but um, it's a great opportunity to potentially learn from this um, and really share good practice amongst, um, amongst us all. So um, back to that slide, that's where we will be with you with the various products that we can provide to you, um, whether it's myself, Joe, Kathy, Steve, any of the team, but you know, principally um, maybe through Joe and myself, if you've got anything you want to talk about as we kick off after Deluxe have um, done the next bit of the process um, around making sure we're as flexible and as focused on what you need, you know, um, do, do speak to us, our numbers will be out there um, as ever. We just want to make sure this is um, as, as successful for you and, and we can really help you wherever we need to be. So that will be on behalf of the task force, sort of our pledge to you. And um, somebody once said to me a saying that I quite like, and it's, it's always about, you know, um, action and it's just start somewhere and follow it everywhere. So it's almost, <laughs> let's have a bit of fun with this in a way and see if we can really get something good, tangible uh, out of it and, uh, and learn from it for, for, the, for the bigger stuff next time. So thank you very much. Uh, any questions? I don't know, Chair, if you want to be... Uh, time. I always get the squeeze spot. Have you noticed that? <laughs> 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 uh, thank you. And I'm not going under. <laughs>